Hi guys, welcome to another YouTube. Um, they've been a little bit sparse just lately. Um, things have been really hectic busy because the guitar show is going out again. Um, we've had rehearsals and all sorts of things have been happening and time hasn't been on, uh, on my side. So I do apologize for the uh, lack of weekly videos. But um, anyway, hopefully we're back with it now. Today's a little bit different. Uh, we're in the mini tour bus again. Well, when I say we, I mean, I'm here, Jay's here. Hello. And well, we've got Cookie. And Cook. But Cookie's not coming with us today. Cookie's going to his grandma and granddad's. Yeah. Oh, he likes it there because he gets nice treats. <laughs> diet treats. We make sure he has diet treats. Um, so today's a little bit different. I am doing radio interviews with the BBC. It's uh, I think Radio Solent, so the next time you see me, we will be probably somewhere near um, the BBC. Okay, see you in a bit. I think I'd just like to say something about Phil. He's been going on and on and on about food the entire journey. So uh, we just realised... <laughs> there he is, if you can see him just realized that we're gonna not be passing any food places. <laughs> Services are two miles and we come off in point eight and I'm starving. <laughs> That's a problem isn't it Phil? So he's gonna have a really rumbly tummy in BBC. So here we are at the BBC. Um, it's very rainy outside and I've just got the weirdest coffee. It's, it's, it's not coffee, it's just, it's a whitey. I don't know what it is, look at it. Look, look it's just, it's just so white. It tastes so white. Anyway, we're here. And I'm still hungry. Phil Walker. Good afternoon, how are you? Uh, I'm fine, I must apologise because I went into the studio and uh, Alan pulled me in and asked me who the guest was and you know you just have those moments where you think I, I really can't, I can remember every other guest we've got coming up <laughs> but I just couldn't remember you so I do apologise for that. Uh, I've got a face that's easy to forget. And, and also I called you Paul when we were talking then and the traffic and travel was on I said are you ready Paul and you looked at me and I thought it's not Paul it's Phil. So <laughs> I don't I'm know, also you talking to somebody else. No, no. well I, I, I was going to cover it and pretend I was talking down the, the line here to somebody else and I thought no I'll, I'll come clean. Anyway uh, Phil Walker is here, uh, his show is called Guitar Hero. Uh, I think this is a really, really good idea, and I was thrilled yesterday when uh, Bob told me you were coming in. Um, so you live in Weymouth. I do. Uh, you've played in various bands, including Doctor and the Medics. Yeah, we've just been talking about that, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we've got a mutual friend in Clive Jackson, the Doctor from Doctor and the Medics. And did you come up with this show, or have you nicked it from someone in America? <laughs> no, it was all my uh, it was all my brainwave. I uh, I came in from a gig one night, and I. I think it was probably about two in the morning, something like that. I sat on the sofa, flicked on um, BBC Four, and saw Guitar Heroes at the BBC. I, um, I then started thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great if all you know these guys you could actually go watch them in one show? And I collect guitars as well, and uh, put two and two together, and uh, came up with this show. Now, this show, um, I mean, you've brought some flyers in because obviously you want me to plug the show on the twenty fourth of February uh, at the Lights in Andover, and that sold out. So then you have me another uh, flyer, and this one says Saturday the 3rd of February, the exchange to Mr. Newton, that has sold out. So oh, is, is it selling out because you've, all, you've been doing it for a few years and the audience are built up? Well, we're, we're starting year four now, um, and I think that does have a lot to do with it. Um, but I think it's just awareness. 
you know, the, the, the more we get out there, the more people hear about it, and uh, everybody that comes to the show really, really enjoys it. Are you a very, very good guitarist, or have you just got a knack of being able to pick up a different guitar and making it sound different? Um, that's a really difficult question. And, and be I honest, if you're a great guitarist, shout about it. Well, I mean, I started when I was six years old. I didn't play football or anything like that, so, um, yeah, that's the only interest I have, that and food. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you've brought in a, a guitar and a, yep. a small amp, and you're going to demonstrate uh, a guitar sound for us. Yes. Um, and in your um, program here, uh, there are uh, a collection of guitars. I hmm. guess you own all of these guitars here, yeah? I do, yeah. So we know the names, the Gibson and the Fender and the Stratocaster. Tell me about the Rickenbacker. I think I know what a Rickenbacker guitar sounds like. Oh, I okay. think there's one on a, a Pretender single. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. Is it trying to get it, me wrong, or um, it, is it brass in pocket? No, talk it's, of the town. Ah. Maybe it's talk of the town. There One you go. There uh, you Bob, go. could we get talk of the town by the Pretenders? I'll play it. And you tell me if it's a Rick. Okay, okay. A, a Rick so what have you got there? This one is my uh, is my red Fiesta Red Fender Stratocaster. Um, this one I use uh, on various parts of the show. I use it for the shadows. Uh, Pink Floyd, Dire Straits, so I thought I'd bring this one in, we could do various things with it. Okay, so this is one that Hank Marvin would have used? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how good were the shadows? I never I never got the shadows, I, to me okay. it sounds all tinkly and, and, and all the same. One shadows record sounds the same and I never got it, but I did get to know Jet Harris very well, ah. and he was like Britain's first rock star. He was the guy who went off the rail. He was a bit like, the, the, you know, like George Best did for football in the late 60s, early 70s. And I really liked him. Yeah. And I met a lot of people who said if it hadn't been for Jet Harris, I never would have picked up the bass. Steve right. Priest from The Sweet being one of them. He was, he was regarded by musicians as such a cool guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah. How good were the shadows? Well, do you know what? You don't actually realise until you, you try and, and emulate their sound and, and, and play like they did. Because um, that's the whole idea of this show, is that we, well, I actually try play and sound exactly like the uh, people that we take off. Um, so, yeah, when you go program a, a shadow sound, you know, you think, oh, it's just a guitar into an amp, but there's a lot more to it than that. You know, you've got to get all the right echoes, and, and then nearly every shadow song's got a different echo. Has it really? It has, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to play a shadows tune in a moment. What are you going to do for us on the guitar? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll just show you the difference um, in a couple of different shadow songs. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll, we'll start with, uh, let's start with the big one. Everybody's going to know this one. <laughs> guitar then I thought that was bass that dun 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 dun. oh no 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 that's um I mean yeah they all had their part on the song uh, definitely but it's uh, if you listen to the there's an echo um, a real distinct echo after it yeah. so you know that one for example would be different to um, wonderful land which is this type of echo which gives um, like a completely wow. different again so Hank Marvin used that guitar. Did you say Dire Straits too? Dire Straits, yeah, yeah, definitely. They, um, but well, Mike Knopfler was well known for playing uh, Fender Strats. And are you going to do a bit of Dire, dire Straits for us now? Yeah, oh, why not? What why are you going to do? Um, I'll do a little bit of Sultan's a Swing. Okay. Um, I personally don't like that one. I prefer Lady Writer. But if you want to do, <laughs> if you want to do Sultan's a Swing, you do Sultan's a Swing. Everybody's just waiting for the fast guitar bit on the end. <laughs> so, Go yeah. on. Very hard to play. It's it, yeah. I mean, to do it correctly, it's it's more about finding it because it was it's so fast that end bit, and if you get it slightly wrong, it just doesn't sound right. So you've got to get it kind of note for note, otherwise you. 
Who do you really like playing? In your programme, uh, the booklet that you've uh, you've brought in here, there are all the guitars you play, uh, and yep. there's obviously your band. And then right at the back, uh, so you've got, you know, Toby James and, uh, you know, Jim and, and, and all the band members from your band. And then you've got pictures of Brian May, Eric Clapton, yep. uh, all of these uh, guys, Eddie Cochran, Hank Marvin, Mark Knopfler, Keith Richards. Uh, and it's great because it looks like they're all playing in your band the way you've done the programme. <laughs> I wish they were. <laughs> um, who, do you, who do you really like playing the music of? Who, who, um, when you get lost on stage and think, this could be me. Do you know what? I, I'm, I'm quite a country fan. Uh, I do like country music. I, I like rock music as well. I think you go through phases. But I think one of the most enjoyable songs for me is a song called Country Boy by Albert Lee. Okay, so he likes country, Bob, and he's a Shadows fan. <laughs> How did this guy get on the show? <laughs> we'll do some more in a mo. <laughs> there we are, the Shadows. I said they're not my cup of tea. They really aren't my cup of tea. But having said that, uh, we've had a couple of the guys, including Hank Marvin, on the show, and I really, really respect them as great musicians. It's just, I... I personally don't get it, but I know they're a great band. Um, right, so uh, we've got Phil Walker with us, um, and he's talking about his Guitar Hero show. Um, so how long's the tour? Uh, we, it's all year. We, we don't exactly have um, a tour period as such. We, we, we start um, at the end of January, and we go right through. And he, once you've played, uh, I don't know, the Tivoli in Wimborne, or mm. the Shanklin Theatre on the Isle of Wight, do you then have to give it a couple of years before you can go back? Because you don't want to kill the goose that lays the golden egg. And isn't that yeah. one of the challenges for an act your size? You're doing your 500 seaters, your 1,000 mm. seaters, your 250 seaters, but you can't keep going. Is Britain big enough? <laughs> yeah, you'd be amazed how many theatres there are, to be honest. Uh, when we first started putting dates together uh, from four years ago, you know, there's a big book, a big theatre book, and you look through it and you think, oh, wow, yeah, well, there's plenty to choose from. <laughs> so, yeah, we, 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 we do like to probably leave 18 months, two years before going back somewhere. And how far do you go? Do you go up, uh, up north? Do you get to Carlisle? Do you get to Scotland? Or do you think, I don't really want to go north of the M25, I've got to be honest. <laughs> no, north of Dorchester. <laughs> No, we, uh, we, we've we been up to Scotland and we're planning on going back to Scotland next February. Um, we, yeah, we're all, we're all over the place. And and you come on, you do a bit of patter, do you? So you say, hi, I'm Phil, uh, and I this do. is uh, how the shadow sounded. And then you'll pick another guitar up and you'll do something on that, yeah? Yeah, I do I, I do a little bit of uh, spiel, so to speak, but we've got um, we've got video screens as well, which, which link things in nicely. So it's, so it's uh, quite a big production then. It is, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Now this is your other half here on the camera, is it? It's filming me. us? Yep, she's over Hello. there. This is Jamie. Yeah? Yes, it is. Hi, Hi Jamie. Hi, yeah. We've got to do something about your wardrobe, Phil. <laughs> I've got to be honest. The, the, the picture here in the front of the uh, magazine, you've got like a, a black jacket on, a black shirt, and some silver kind of way around your neck. That is a good look. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. That is a good look in there. We like that. And then there's various jackets you wear. There's one here with some braid on. It's a bit like a Michael Jackson jacket. Oh, that, that, yeah, that's my Hendrix jacket. Yeah, your Hendrix yeah, jacket. Hendrix okay. Jacket. That is a good look. But I've got to be honest, it looks like some nights you haven't even bothered. <laughs> I mean, look at this one. You've got like a black t shirt on with like a, a, a gingham-y check shirt undone. And it looks like you arrived but didn't have time to get changed. Ah, that's my Eagles look. Well, it's not working. <laughs> So you, you, so if you're going to do a bit of quo, you're going to put a denim waistcoat on, do you? Well, no, we we, we don't actually do the looky likey thing, um, but we we, we kind of. I don't think I actually wear that shirt anymore. Well, I'm I glad. Can't, can't understand why. Because you have got it. When you try, when you bother, <laughs> you should look at your stage appearance. It's like your musicianship. It's an important part I, of the I show. I love my stylist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I haven't got one. I fire. I was going to say fire your stylist. And get <laughs> Right, let's have a listen to Talk of the Town then. Let's see if this is the song that I think it is. Um, this is the uh, the Pretenders. It might not be this. Well, maybe Chrissy Hine used a Rick and Backer on everything. BBC Radio Sun Wednesday the 24th of January 2018. Good afternoon. Uh, we're with guitar hero Phil Walker, uh, who's uh, popped up from... Uh, uh, Weymouth to see us at our Southampton studios today to tell us about this tour which is doing really really well it's not even like you're here to plug the tour is it because uh, a lot of the venues have sold out well yeah that was the intention this morning and we had a phone call on the way here 
and uh, yeah, found out that one had sold out, and one's almost sold out, which is which is great news. So were you tempted to turn around and think, oh, I'm just going to go home and have a cup oh, of yeah, tea? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, Heinz, can you please tell Phil Walker um, that he's excellent, uh, an excellent uh, guitar player. I think he's great. Must admit, until uh, now, I feel ashamed to say that I'd not heard of him, uh, but I, uh, I I have done now. Says Anita. So that's nice, isn't that's it? That's very kind. Thank you so much. So, uh, how long's the show? The show's two hours. Right. We have a twenty-minute interval. Um, so. so you do um, George Harrison while my guitar gently weeps. Do you do the George Harrison bit or the Eric Clapton bit? I kind of do both, really. Um, we, like Toby and, and myself, we, we kind of split things between us as well. So um, if there's a, a difficult vocal bit, then you know Toby might take the difficult guitar bit, and we swap between us a little bit as well. Okay, and when you do Brian May, you have to put your plectrum down and get an old sixpence, an old coin. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's it's like the I've actually got one with me uh, today, but it's yeah the difference in sound is, is is quite a lot. You get more of a sort of a raspy type sound, which um, you can play a Brian May type sound with a plectrum, and then you play it with the sixpence, and it worlds apart. Wow. So do you have to uh, go on eBay to keep uh, buying <laughs> secondhand sixpences? Where did you get your yeah. first secondhand sixpence from? Um, well, I used to use a five p to start with, but they're too small. Um, so then, yeah, I just I just went on eBay, and I think I'll, I'll buy in bulk now. So, so how many sixpences did you last buy? Um, oh, that's a good question. I've never been. That's a great that question. Yeah, I've yeah. got an even better one for you. How much is an old sixpence? Sixpence? No, I know on eBay. How much is an old sixpence? I think I, I bought ten last time. I think it's about five five six quid for ten or something like that. Crikey! Yeah. Well, there we are. Uh, right, you're going to do another one for us now. You're going to do a little bit of Hendrix, then we're going to uh, okay. play. Then we're going to play Layla. Um, so, uh, do you want to do uh, Hendrix for us first? What, what, how, how difficult? When, tell me this: is Clapton difficult and challenging, mm. and Hendrix is nearly impossible, and maybe someone else is quite straightforward? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, it's it's not about how many notes you play. Um, it's about how they how they actually approach the guitar how they hold it um how they you know the strike the strings um, all things like that and obviously you've got to have the gear that kind of gets you in the ballpark as well but you have got to kind of think like them a little bit okay so this is on the fender stratocaster yep. and this is Jimi hendrix doing is it purple yeah. haze it is yeah I guess you can use the same sweat band for Hendrix's head as you can when, <laughs> when you do your Martin Offler. Well, no, I probably would do if we did the Lucky Likey thing, but we, like I said, we don't do that. But right. yeah, sometimes I wish I had a, I wish I had a sweat band. I guess. Now, Layla by Eric Clapton, Derek and the Dominoes. Uh, mm. That is probably one of the most famous intros of all time. Do you think that he suffered for his art coming up with that, or do you think it just came to it? Um. I think it's the same with like these guitar players. They'll they'll just be noodling around one day. They'll come up with something and go, oh, I like that, and then there you go, they're off. That's it. Um, did did this one take a long time to learn, Layla? Uh, it's one I'd, I've been doing for a long, long time. I did it when I was a kid. Um, I was a big Eric Clapton fan as well growing up, so um, I kind of put in the old uh, vinyl on when I was a kid, and I just sort of over the I don't know, however many months just picked it up and it's been with me since then really I'm going to tell you this I'm not a musician I'm a frustrated musician <laughs> right? I think most disc jockeys are um, but, but I used to be able to play the intro to Smoke on the Water oh do you want to do it now? well I can't remember can't, can't, I, I think a four year old can do it can't they? Uh, well, maybe it's, isn't it really 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 simple? I don't know I can't play it oh come on <laughs> yes you can <laughs> It's so simple, isn't it? Is it was, why is it so simple? Is it just a few different notes? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. It's, um, I think it's just the, it's the, you know, that's just like, it's open strings, and then you just, you can, 
just bar across the. Um, you don't even have to play a chord or anything to do it. That's why then. Okay. Then, yeah. Come on, there. Do be smoke on the water. Come on. <laughs> We don't actually do that one in the show. No, we, why is that? Yet. Is it because it's so obvious? We, uh, we, we, no, we picked the, um, we, we have asked a lot of people when we put the show together, you know, who's your guitar hero? Who do you feel is a guitar hero? Um, and we, we got the people that we've got now. And uh, next year we're, we're looking at changing the show again. We change it every couple of years. And just recently we have been getting asked for that. Who have you dumped from the show? What done? songs have you taken out? Well, that's not working anymore. We've done that so many times. It's too cliche. Who who did you dump from the last show? One of my favourites, actually. It was uh, Brian Setzer from the Stray Cats. Oh, really? Why did you yeah. drop that? Um, I, I don't know. It just didn't seem to... People didn't seem to warm to it that much. But then again, I've, I've had emails saying, oh, you didn't play the sets of stuff tonight. Now, was it oh, Runaway oh. Boys or... We did Stray, Stray Cats, Cats Strut and then um, followed it up with Sleepwalk. Ah, right, okay. Right, so you're going to do Layla for us now. Okay. Okay, so we're going to enjoy this. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what, Phil, you're you're brilliant, and this is such oh, a good idea for a show. And you're a nice guy, so you've got it all, and you've got a, a lovely uh, lady on your arm too. So uh, congratulations! <laughs> Thank that, you so much. Will you come back and see us again? I would love to. Right. Okay. So if people want to follow um, the story of Guitar Heroes, have you got a great Facebook page? We've got a Facebook page. Yeah, just type in the story of Guitar Heroes. There's the website, which is storyofguitarheroes.com. And you can even follow me on YouTube, which is Phil Walker Guitarist. So do you do a little kind of, here's how you play on, on YouTube. Is that how you, you know, this is how you play Layla. Do you do that? Um, I, I don't really do the teaching thing so much. Um, but, I, I, you know, we do, I do go in like backstage of the show and all things like that. And people like to uh, have demos of the guitars. So I do, obviously I do things like that as well. And okay. various guitar based things. Well, I would love you back. But next time we want you to make more, a bit more of an effort with your clothes. <laughs> uh, and look a bit more rock and roll for us. But we'd, we'd love you back, Phil. Uh, you're Thank a lovely you. guy. And uh, congratulations on a really, really good idea. You're very, very talented. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that was an interesting day. Um, interesting presenter. That was, uh, yes, very good, very good. Um, I did get something to eat, by the way. I went to a uh, beef eater. And uh, yeah, I'm talking about food again, aren't I? Oh, oh well, never mind. Um, thank you uh, for watching this video. Please like and subscribe uh, for, for hopefully more weekly videos. And oh, incidentally, if you were interested um, what I was using to get the sound in the, um, in the radio station, I was using um, my Vox. I've just bought a new little Vox AC10. Because um, it's light and it sounds great. And I was plugging the Helix uh, straight into the front of that. And that's what I was using. Um, the, the radio stations don't usually like you to just DI straight in. They're just like you take an amp in and use their mics. Um, so that's why I was using that. Uh, anyway, once again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Cheerio.